please like my videos please subscribe to my channel and please press the bell icon so that you get to know when my latest video has come and to learn more and to find a video relevant to you please do check out my videos list hello namaskar and awa to all my friends from your friend astrologer and guide irfan once more with you from your very own channel astro assurance when we look at the nakshatra energies it is very important for us to know which nakshatra we are born in and hence the nakshatra which moon lies in becomes the nakshatra which guides controls our horoscope and controls a lot of attributes of the horoscope controls a lot of situations even the mindset and what are the probabilities that we can face so the nakshatra that we are born in or moon being in the nakshatra is very important secondly the nakshatra of the ascendant is also become very very important the nakshatra where the lagna lord is placed is very very important and if there are any specific strong yogas like a gajkesari yoga or a, uh, or a lakshmi yoga or a dharma karma dipati yoga if they are formed in a certain nakshatra then those nakshatras also become very very important so the overarching energy of a horoscope is not one nakshatra but there are combination of three four nakshatras which which rule the overall dissemination manifestation and the probable results that we can get out of our life and get out of the horoscope however what kind of nakshatras have more involved energies or combining energies define what route the life takes for example we know that just like the signs are dharma artha kama and moksha each house is dharma artha kama moksha similarly the nakshatras also have the dharma the artha the kama and a moksha energies now however one of the important things which is very very strongly seen in the nakshatra energies is that when the nakshatras are also ruled by planets or certain rulers which are deities they become very very important in dissemination of the results of life for example whichever nakshatra moon is in at the time of your birth that nakshatra's ruler that rulers of that planets dasha starts first and hence that dasha because that particular planet dasha starts first so the initial shaping of a characteristics of our upbringing all is shaped by those nakshatra energies i made a video on what is the meaning of you being born in a certain dasha please have a look at it that will give you more clear clarity and more in depth ideas about why is it that you are born in a certain dasha and how is it related to the dasha lord also how it shapes our personalities how it shapes our characteristics how it shapes our lives and how it shapes the various situations we face and the output that we face so please have a look at that video that will give you more clarity so the nakshatras are very very important the combination of the nakshatras which nakshatras have an overarching energy in your horoscopes are important which means that if more nakshatras which are stronger or manifesting in your horoscope are more related to dharma energies then the dharma energies hold forth so if for example the nakshatra in which moon is is a dharma nakshatra your ascendant nakshatra is also a dharma nakshatra a strong yoga like a gajkesari yoga is also formed in a dharma nakshatra so the dharma nakshatra energies are coming to the fore that gives you an idea that where your life should instinctively move because the nakshatra have a dharma energy if you don't follow the nakshatra combination energies don't move on that path then you will get lost and that's why many times when we feel lost we feel frustrated we feel anxious is because we are not looking at what are the overall energies of the horoscope the overall energies of the horoscope are, are ruled by the ascendant definitely the ascendant lord and also what signs the ascendants are and also the overall energies of the nakshatra combination of the nakshatra energies and a combination of all this shows whether we have a certain overarching energies of either dharma or artha or kama or moksha which direction we need to move which is a bigger purpose of our life is dharma a bigger purpose of our life is artha a bigger purpose of our life is kama a bigger purpose of our life or moksha is a bigger purpose of our life those are very very important and in these we know that certain planetary placements including in some shlokas it has been said that certain shlokas tell us that certain placements give us more direction towards where the life can go 
and in many of them moksha has also been talked about but there is this conception of i don't know whether i can call it a misconception but definitely it's a popular belief that ketu in the 12th house is a strong you know pointer towards that you may be getting moksha in this life or this could be the last life that you have after this you can get moksha there is no guarantee because i haven't met any person yet who has ketu in the 12th house and has got moksha have you do you know any person who has got moksha who has ketu in the 12th house so we don't know but definitely if the certain shlokas are saying telling that to us so that definitely there is some truth to it but there is a larger truth to the overall nakshatra energies because the nakshatras are the dna or the forming or the genetic material of the horoscope and in the nakshatras we will see we see that though the nakshatras have dharma energies artha energies kama energies and moksha energies not a single ketu ruled nakshatra is a moksha nakshatra so if ketu is a strong dissemination or pointer or uh, you know a catalyst towards giving us moksha then at least some nakshatra if not more nakshatras of ketu or ruled by ketu should be a moksha nakshatra each planet in the uh, nakshatra system out of 27 nakshatras we have nine planets who rule three three nakshatras each so each naksha each planet is given certain types of nakshatras to rule ketus the three nakshatras they rule dharma artha and kama but no moksha the first nakshatra which ketu rules or the first nakshatra of the zodiac as well is ashwini ruled by ketu it is a dharma nakshatra the second nakshatra which ketu rules which falls in the leo sign is the magha nakshatra and that is a artha nakshatra and the third nakshatra that ketu rules which lies in the sagittarius sign is the mula nakshatra and that nakshatra is a kama nakshatra no moksha nakshatra to ketu what does this mean firstly we need to understand what rahu and ketu energies mean and without talking of rahu how can we talk of ketu rahu and ketu are like the black and white screen in our lives rahu is like the white screen when you go to watch a cinema in a movie theater the screen in front of us is the big white screen why is the screen white not of green or pink or blue or black the reason is white color or white screens reflect or white surfaces reflect back all the colors so the projector which is a small projector which is projecting on the screen that is a smaller light however because the reflecting platform is a white screen a white curtain a white cloth all the colors are reflected back and because they are reflected back we can see that's why we cannot see in the dark because the colors are or the light is not reflected back only when there is light in the room we can see colors or we can see images because the light is reflected back into our eyes into our retina so the white screen reflects back the colors many times over that white screen represents rahu because rahu is an explosion is an expansion huge expansion much much higher than jupiter so rahu explodes in many many ways many times so the colors are also reflected by by the white screen and so we are able to see colors ketu on the other hand is like a black screen it absorbs all the colors and gives up very very less so if you have a black screen on which a movie is projected you will hardly be able to see anything you won't be able to make out one image from the other because most of the colors are being absorbed and ketu is a planet of negation whichever sign ketu is placed with whichever house ketu is placed with whichever planet ketu is placed with ketu absorbs maximum of those attributes and lets you very less and you have to work very very hard to overcome those ketu energies of negation and of course there is a deeper meaning to it the deeper meaning is that you need to work for others the ketu is concerned only when you work for others you don't work for self ketu then starts becoming the white screen and reflects back many times over 
at a spiritual level when you work at a ketu level where you don't work for yourself you work for others then ketu gives you at a spiritual level level many times over many times we feel that i am working so hard i do so much service for others why am i not getting a materialistic benefits the reason is because you are getting spiritual benefits and for the zodiac the spiritual benefits are more higher mean more because eventually your soul wants moksha wants salvation wants to lighten the materialistic burden and through the lighting of the materialistic burden the soul rises higher the soul's elevation happen when the burden is not on the sh- on the shoulders of the s- of the soul if i can use that term shoulders of the soul if you are carrying a lot of burden of frustration and anxieties of karma of of money of materialism then the lord will not allow the spiritual elevation so ketu being a planet of negation ketu wants you to negate things which is why ketu's three nakshatras are a dharma and artha and kama why because ketu negates that for yourself so the first nakshatra if you're born in the first nakshatra ashwini which is a dharma nakshatra the overlying message for you is that your dharma your duty is for others first and yourself later and this is not a coincidence that the lagna which is in the kalpurush kundli represented by the ari sign and thus and thus the ashwini energies the first nakshatra is ashwini that is ruled by ketu and it is a dharma nakshatra so the first nakshatra is telling us telling you and me that your dharma is to negate things for yourself and do for others your duty when you have come into this world is not for yourself you have come into this world so that you can do for your for others and that is the biggest duty that you have your duty to yourself comes later or comes last the duty that you have come in this world for is to do for others to service others and to servicing others you serve the supreme lord and that's why the first nakshatra that ketu rule ketu rules ashwini is the dharma nakshatra which means negate the duty for yourself and do your duty for others your duty is for others when you do that then you will truly live the dharma attributes which the ketu nakshatra the ashwini nakshatra represents then the second nakshatra ketu rules is the maha nakshatra which falls in the leo sign and the maga nakshatra is and is an artha nakshatra which means that it's a negation of artha for you when if you're born in that nakshatra ruled by ketu ketu is negating artha for yourself ketu is saying that you need to get artha or money or materialism for others which includes your family your responsibility is also towards your family so the artha that you earn in this life the livelihood that you are given the earning that you are giving the, the opulence that you are given the huge prosperity you are given is not for yourself alone you should not end up buying large houses big cars and an affluent life jet planes and all that surely you can do it after you cross a certain threshold of giving to others so the artha that you are given is not for yourself it is to give to share with others so the poor people are, are poor so that it's a test for the rich people whether you share with the poor or not and many times the rich people fail in that duty and hence most of the rich people have lot of nervous problems frustrations anxieties and fears the fear of the poor person is the next meal only if he is assured the next meal or if he is assured a meal for a week or a month he is still okay but the rich person is always scared what if there is a raid what if i lose the money what if the stock market crumble what if my company falls short he is more scared he lives in a more fearful world than the others and hence because the rich people many times don't follow giving up of artha that is the main reason why they are born in a born rich to give for others to share wholeheartedly and then to keep a small part of it for themselves they don't do it and that's why being rich is a test for you the artha which is given for you to you is a test for you if you fall short of the test then my friends invite frustration invite anxieties invite stomach ulcers invite all sorts of mental problems you are only left with money relations friends everything you have to have a question mark 
are these friends with me because i have money are these people nice to me my family members even if my are my family members nice to me so that i can leave them an inheritance a big legacy all these doubts come in your mind you doubt every relationship you doubt every friendship that is not a way to live so if you are born in an artha nakshatra like maga ruled by ketu then your duty is to give off most of the artha that you get for others and only then you truly live the ketu represented nakshatra of maga then the third nakshatra which is the mula nakshatra the mula nakshatra is a kama nakshatra or having passion ruled by ketu which means the passion that you have in your life whatever your passion for whatever your desire is for your desire should be for yourself later what is the passion for your passion could be for arts your passion could be could be for music your passion could be for any hobbies your passion could be for ad- adventurism your passion could be in acting your pa- passion could be in writing your passion could be in the sexual act itself in intimacy whatever passion you follow the passion is should be to contribute first and then expect later even in the sexual act in the intimacy act without taking care of the sexual needs of the intimacy needs of the partner and only being selfish in the sexual act in the intimacy act then that passion is not right you need to take care of each other's needs also each other's desires also each other's wants also only then that is true passion true ketu related passion or the karma that you are do- that you are indulging in at any level music arts the intimacy act whatever it is to contribute first to give to others first before you seek for yourself so if you are following a passion in music the music is not for yourself the music is to keep others happy to share the arts that you are being given to share the talent that you are being given to others and to make them happy who is more happy when you if you are a big singer and if you are singing in the auditorium you may be loving the, the 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 whole thing the whole environment people people have come to see you and you're performing and the respect and adulation you get however the people who are happier or happiest is the audience who is listening to you all in thrall looking at you with starry eyes and they feel good they want to touch you they want to get close to you if you are if you reach that pinnacle and in fact there is some fear in you that what if i don't perform what if my act goes wrong what if i forget my lines what if the audience doesn't like my performance you are having these nervous butterflies in your stomach not the audience the audience has come to be happy the audience has come to be enthralled by you so the happier people are the ones who are getting contributed to through your passion so the arts which has been given to you the passion that you have been given to you to do a performance or indulge in that be more giving and then and be less expecting and then you will find that you will be living at the or manifesting the true desires or you will be manifesting the true energies of ketu at that level and hence none of the nakshatras of belonging to ketu ruled by ketu are a moksha nakshatra because you can give up moksha when ketu rules a nakshatra you have to give up dharma for yourself you come later you have to give up artha that you get for others then manifest for yourself you have to give up passion for others and then try to manifest yourself and then automatically the moksha comes to you now if you are living a life where you are doing for others your duty or your dharma you are looking you are, you, are, you have already taken it that your dharma is to do for others your responsibility for others and if you are, if you are in any dharma nakshatra not only about ketu in any dharma nakshatra if you are born if your dharma is at a high level and you think that your duty is to do for others then you are on the path to truly manifesting your dharma if you are born in a artha nakshatra any nakshatra whether it is ruled by ketu or not if you are truly living that life that you want to contribute to others first help others get a livelihood or gain or share your prosperity with others then you are on the right path being born in an artha nakshatra if you are born in a kama nakshatra and your passion whatever your passion is for whatever your desire is for whatever you want to follow in life if whatever you do you want to contribute to others you want to make others happy you want to take care of others needs first 
give them that happiness first then you're on the true path towards being manifesting the karma the true meaning of karma in your life then the moksha become the path towards moksha is easier so the true path towards moksha is not getting on the path to salvation by giving up trying to live like a hermit uh, or in penance the true path to moksha is to walk on the path of dharma artha and karma with giving up contributing and doing the best that you can in the in these three to contribute then the indirect path towards moksha is to be walk on the paths of these three and then automatically they all lead towards moksha if you're living these three nakshatra energies at the highest level of dissemination or at the true ketu energies so friends look into your own horoscope which are the overarching energies in your horoscope are the more dharma energies are the more artha energies are the more kama energies or are the moksha energies based on that manifest your life lead a life of more contribution keeping people more happy and giving more and desiring less for yourself and then you will automatically be on the path towards moksha whatever nakshatra you are born in so friends like this video share this video and if you're looking for a personal consultation for me please reach out to me the links given below until some other time with some other video this is a friend astrology and guide from signing off ciao